you are looking at a um, system that is oscillating up and down in simple harmonic motion. And the system is set up with a mass that's on a spring and it's oscillating between maybe points B and D and it goes up and down. So as it goes up and down, there are three energies that are changing. Gravitational potential energy is going up and down, spring potential energy is going up and down, and kinetic energy is going up and down. Ideally, to look at this whole uh, change in energy system, we would have this on a horizontal situation where you had like a frictionless surface and this spring would both push and pull. But finding those springs to use in an experiment and having a frictional surface is really challenging, and I just don't have that. So we are using the vertical system, and we're using basically the spring to pull up and gravity to pull down. So when the mass is displaced upward, gravity is bringing it back to its equilibrium. When the mass is displaced downward, the spring is bringing it back to its equilibrium. And I'm gonna show you that it doesn't really matter what force is doing that. It doesn't matter that there's two forces doing that, and it's not just spring force. It, we can still see simple harmonic motion. So in this diagram, the y equals zero is the equilibrium position for the spring. So if there was no mass on the spring, then that's where the spring, the end of the spring would be at y equals zero. Z equals zero is the equilibrium position of the spring when the mass is actually on the spring. So this is in the lab, the part of the lab that you just did, this is where you should have zeroed the force probe and the motion detector at this equilibrium position. Um, so if we write an equation for the total energy of the system, we would have energy total equals one half k y squared. This is um, elastic potential energy, one half kx squared. But the x is, they're just using y in this situation. Sorry, this keeps refocusing on my hand instead of the paper. So um, since y is set up here, it's just measuring from that position. Then you have one half mv squared, that's your kinetic energy. And then you have one half mgy, that is your gravitational potential energy. And that's just being measured from y, the same point as the spring. It doesn't really matter where gravitational potential energy is measured from, because remember only changes in gravitational potential energy are gonna matter. So they ju we just choose the same position as the spring potential energy. So now I'm going to derive um, a simplification of the system for you because it would be pretty challenging if you think about the data you just took to figure out the spring potential energy, you know, to find the stretch of the spring from its initial position. Kinetic energy would pretty be, be pretty easy and then gravitational potential energy wouldn't be so hard, but you would have to combine all three of those. If we look at y and z, they are related by this term h, which is basically just the distance between y and z. So the distance between the spring's equilibrium position when there's nothing on it and the equilibrium position of the spring mass system. So I can write an equation which is y equals z minus h because y's position is going to be z and then you subtract h from that to get y. Um, so now I'm going to plug in this term into y here and into y here. And we are going to get, instead of 1 half k y squared, we get 1 half k times z minus h squared. And we get 1 half mv squared is the same, and then mg uh, times z minus h. Now we can think about the mass when it's in its equilibrium position. The force of gravity acting down is equal to the spring force acting up. These are balancing each other. That's, it's in its equilibrium position. So we can write a net force equation where if we choose up as positive and we're not writing this with vectors, just with scalars, we have negative mg because gravity is acting downward plus kh, um, this is just Hooke's law, so kx 
which is spring constant times how much the spring is stretched. And the spring is stretched h, because this is where the spring was with no mass on it, and this is where the spring is with mass on it. So we can rearrange this. Because the net force is equal to zero, we know the gravitational force is equal to the spring force. And we can solve for h, and we get this statement here, that h is equal to mg over k. And you could have done this like in Hooke's Law back last semester. Using Hooke's Law, you could do that. Now I'm going to plug this in for my h's here. So now instead of z minus h, I have z minus mg over k in both places. Then I'm going to foil this. So from here to here, we are foiling. And we get this term. And then we're going to distribute. Um, the 1 half k. We're going to distribute that to all three of those terms, and we're going to distribute the mg here. So once we do all that, we end up with 1 half kz squared minus mgz plus 1 half m squared g squared over k plus 1 half mv squared. Our kinetic energy is still hanging out there. Plus mgz minus m squared g squared over k squared. So you should notice that mgz's cancel. And these terms are the same, the m squared g squared over k. We have a plus 1 half and a minus 1. So we are going to move to the next line here. And we see that we can combine these two into negative 1 half m squared g squared over k. Over k. This whole thing is constant. Like, these are all constants. And since we really only care about the changes in energy, the constants aren't really going to matter. So when we write our change in energy equation, we can just drop that out because it's going to be in the initial situation and the final situation. It's kind of like uh, setting your gravitational potential energy, uh, your zero reference line, as low as you can so that you don't have um, any gravitational potential energy that's the same in both situations. So it would just cancel. So um, that's going to go away, and we get this equation. Uh, change in energy is equal to 1 half kz squared plus 1 half mv squared. And just a reminder that z is the position of the mass from, its, from the system's equilibrium position. So that in your data that you just collected that is your position data point since you set this as your zero. So you can make a column for potential energy by doing k, one half k, and you do need to measure the k of your spring, times z, which is your position value squared. Then you can make a calculated column for your kinetic energy using one half mv squared. And then you can make a, a column for your total energy which would be these two added together. And you should put all three of those on one graph. That's all.